Yo, what's up, guys? It's Shady here. Today we're here with our week seven game of the APA Academy season two. This week we're going up against Coach A Aaron Two Four Twenty and his Calgary Infernapes. Um, make sure to check him out. His uh, YouTube, Twitter, all that will be in the description below. The battle will likely not be up this Sunday, the day this goes up, um, just because he's been a little behind on videos. He's had personal things going on. But it will eventually be up, so I guess, you know, sometime in the next week you can go watch his side of the battle. Um, yeah, we're just going to get right into this. We took a, a, won, a win last week over odds, I believe. Um, yeah, with all of our hacks involved. So that's a little unfortunate for him, but of course we do come out with a win. We are now 3-3. Three and three. Aaron is also 3-3, three and three, so we would like to... You know, take this win, and that would put us above uh, the 500 threshold. Not threshold, there's no like threshold, but just over the 500 uh, mark when it comes to our record. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get right into this. Uh, our team is of course on screen. We have Lugia, Ash Greninja, Mega Charizard X, Gorgeous, Melodic, Snorlax, Hip on top, Ready Steel, Rotom, right on. Core guys stand itself. Whereas um, Aaron has his team on the screen as well. He has Lunala, Landorus Eye, Weavile, Araquanid, Mega Aerodactyl, Roserade, Heliolus, Gyarados, Komo'o, Darmanitan, Escavalier, and Diancy. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, those were our rosters. I'm gonna go over the team that we decided to bring. We decided to bring our Ash Greninja pretty, um, uh, pretty specially offensive. Uh, with, but it was hasty because we did have uh, Rock Slide on it, Dark Pulse, Water Shirk, and Rock Slide Ice Beam. Rock Slide for that Araquanid. Um, so yeah, that's our Ash Greninja Life Orb. Next we have a uh, pretty specially defensive Snorlax. Um, it has some physical bulk. I wish I could tell you why. I, I don't remember, honestly. Uh, with Body Slam, Pursuit, Whirlwind, and Recycle Body Slam. Obviously for me to have Pursuit to trap that Lunala um, and get a good chip amount of chip on it uh whirlwind to stop in case he is a calm on lunel and he tried to sit up on us in case come out comes in on us we could whirlwind it out i'll probably do that because they would not want it to dd and then of course recycle to get back our aya papa berry next we have a fizz def uh flame warp my loaded what's called ice beam recover toxic we have a fizz def for just with moonblast hp fire synthesis and defog we have a choice scarf to zelf with such shock shadow ball flint thor u-turn and we have a rather special defensive ready steel with Seismic Toss, Thunder Punch, Shadow Claw, and Stealth Rock. So that is the team that we decided to bring. Um, you see R6 on screen. He decided to bring his... Um, he decided to bring his Mega Aerodactyl, which is something I thought he might bring. Uh, I definitely thought it wasn't like the worst thing. But, you know, it was one of those mods where I could see it being replaced with a different one on his roster. About the Heliolisk, I thought that would come. I thought that would be probably like a choice scarf set. Um, Kamo'o just going to be DD um, with probably Z move. Lunala, I thought would be a Calm Mind, Rook Roost, Focus Blast, Moon Guys Beam set. Uh, Landorus, I thought would be physical, uh, physically offensive. And Araquanid, I thought that would just be a like um, Charty Berry lore for my. Um, Ash Greninja because I thought Rock Slide was pretty obvious, but it was still something I was going to bring. Um, so yeah, that's the team that I'm expecting him to bring. I thought like other things he got to bring. I thought the Weavile looked pretty nice with like low kick. Um, I thought maybe like a defensive gear those might be a little interesting. Uh, but no, he didn't bring those two obviously. He decided to opt for other things on his team. So yeah, uh, that's the team that he decided to bring. Uh, you know, my team and we'll get into it right now. So um, yeah. I believe I decided to go off with myself just because, like I said, I enjoy Scarf, so I can just uh, U-turn out on anything he wants to lead off with, and I'll be fine. I'm fine with Rio, and then I'm going Scarf turn one, uh, depending on what he leads with. And he's actually going to lead off with Mega Aerodactyl, meaning that I would have to reveal it. But in the back of my mind, I think that he has Pursuit. I think that Pursuit is definitely something that he could be bringing on this. So I am not going to swap out here. I'm actually just going to stay in and just fire off the Psy Shock. Depending on his set, I might do a KO. It is a very, very, very close roll. But um, I would be taking a ton of damage from Crunch. As in, like, I would 
probably not be able to switch into rocks after the pursuit if he decides to bring it. So I'm just going to stay in here and just side shock. And I am going to be just barely possibly 2 KO depending on rules. And he's actually just going to taunt predicting the swap. Or maybe he thought I had uh, set up my own rocks. Uh, either way, obviously, we are going to get the side shock and pressure him out. He is going to swap out into his Lunala. And I really wanted to make a double out predicting that. But I just decided to fire off the side shock because I thought maybe he predict me to uh, to swap and just click like stone edge or rocks or something so i just decided to uh, stay in as he does in fact go up into his lunala so that's a little unfortunate here i'm gonna go out into my snorlax and he's actually gonna fire off the moon blast predicting my astro ninja so um, that's really good for me i'm gonna eat that of course and he's gonna get the special attack drop that's no big deal here i'm looking to pursue i can't imagine he stays in and he of course does swap obviously and he's gonna be knocked out very very low um i'm not surprised that it didn't kill I actually did a little bit more than I expected, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, that's fine. He is going to go out into his Kamo'o here. And like I said before, I, my plan should have always been to Whirlwind, predicting the DD. But obviously, I did not this turn, and he actually does set the DD. So had I Whirlwind, that would have been amazing. He's going to uh, Dragon Dance here. And I fully expect the Z move, whether it be the Poison, the Z Poison, or the Z Iron Head. So I am going to actually double out here into my Reggie still predicting that. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do right here. And uh, as you're going to see, we are going to go out into our Reggie still, and he is going to fire off the Z move here. Um, and it is going to be the Stillium Z, so he does have the Z Iron Head, or maybe the Z Iron Tail, if that's what he really wanted to do. Uh, but I imagine it's going to be Z Iron Head. Uh, so yeah. We are going to, of course, eat this up pretty decently, considering it's, you know, resisted, we're already still, um, all that. And here, um, I kind of made an interesting play after this, after eating it. I needed my ready still 100%, so I am going to swap out here, of course. Um, and I'm going to go out into my Zelf on the close combat here, because we can eat a plus one close combat. And we outspeed, and we probably kill with the Psy Shock after the Spadef drop, or the Fizz Def drop, since we are, um, since we are, um, whatever it's called, we are Scarfed, we outspeed, and he actually makes a good play in DDs on my swap, and I didn't have Thunder Wave, so I couldn't even stay in a Thunder Wave with Reggie Stone, let it go down, so... Um, he's just gonna be able to Dragon Claw this turn and kill me. And here is where I make probably the biggest misplay of the game. This is something I did like two weeks ago against mid, and that's why we lost versus him. Um, here I'm gonna go out to my Lodic in order to get the Toxic off. Um, when in reality, um, I didn't check the count because I just assumed that Floyd just did not live the Z Iron Head. Uh, just because it's, phys it's physical defense isn't really too great, even if I am completely physically defensively invested. Um, and we're going to take a close combat with Milotic in order to get the Toxic off. But now we're pretty much forced to sack Milotic. I mean, I could have gone the cover off possibly on like the Araquanid or something. So maybe I should have just like kept it. But uh, yeah, we're going to let Milotic go down there. And Milotic was a very, very important wall. And you'll see how uh, me not after Milotic is really going to change the pace of the game. For me at least here, I'm going to go into my floor just because I, I did the Kelk and I realized, oh, I could live the Iron Head. So I'm just going to stay in here and live the Moon Blast. Or live the Iron Head and just move last time to go down. Whereas he DDs a third time, and he told me after the game that the reason he did that was because um, he was confused as to why I didn't go out into Fortress as well, considering that I lived. And so he must have thought that I was going to Toxic stall him. And so predicting the protect, uh, he clicked DD, and I ended up just clicking Moon Blast obviously and taking him out. So here's gonna go out and do the Mega Air Dax, which is what I thought he'd do because he can actually live the Moon Blast. Um, which doesn't matter because I mean he outspeeds and you just get the roost off for free anyways. So um, yeah, he's just gonna be able to get the roost off against me as I am going to click Moon Blast, uh, hoping that maybe he like does some misplay like taunts, then get like a crit to kill or something like that. And I also didn't really have a great switch in to this because like I said, I lost my Melodic. My Melodic was my main switch into this Mega Aerodactyl. Um, here I am gonna go out hard into my Ready Still here um, because. Uh, I'm going to try to make a good play here. Uh, I'm going to predict the 
stone edge, of course. I don't want to take a stone edge with my forges. I'm going to go into my ready still here. And here, predicting him to taunt on my stealth rock or thunder wave. Uh, obviously, I don't have thunder wave, but he might want to watch out for that. I'm going to actually double out here into my ash ninja on the taunt. Um, and he is going to click taunt. So now I am going to be able to get a free move here. Here, I can actually live the stone edge. Of course, I don't want to take one because I'm life orb and I'd be very, very weak. But here I'm going to predict the swap and just click the rock slide. Maybe he like misses stone edge or something like that. Um, and so I'm just going to click rock slide as he does go hard to his Araquanid. And as you can see here, it does just under half, like 40%. Which is about how much it should have done, but it's definitely unfortunate that I, uh, it only did 40%. Maybe if, if I was uh, if I had my battle bond off, then that would have been great. But you know, we of course did not. Here I'm going to go into my register because that's my opportunity to get the rocks up against him as he just clicks leech life here doesn't make an over prediction like liquidations or anything like that so that's good for us um and here in my eyes i i don't see lefties and i know i said charlie earlier in the game but obviously he's not because we rock slided so in my eyes i think that he is probably like a uh, a pinch berry you know i pop up whatever figgy all of that nonsense and so here i'm gonna try my best with my ready steel to kind of put him in range of anything but a um uh like put him right outside of the range of his uh fifty percent berry and I'm just going to go out let my ready still go down and then go out into my uh Ash Greninja and pick up a KO so I can get my battle bond off and at that point he is just in a very very bad situation to kinda of deal with it. The only thing he really have less is left is his Heliolisk. Um but he's actually gonna reveal to be rest, meaning that he was most likely rest up chest though mean that I could have actually just gotten off another attack. Um, as you saw there, I clicked the Stealth Rocks a second time because I was going to let him kill me um, while he was only at 30% and then go out in my Ash Greninja. But he actually revealed to be the Resto Chesto, which um, sucks for us because now this thing is a lot healthier than it should have been. Not like I would have killed with Thunder Punch or Seismic Toss. I think it, he still lived no matter what. But you know, maybe I could have gotten a crit with Thunder Punch, which is what I would have gone for. Maybe the Paralysis. Um, had I known that he was the rest set. So that's unfortunate for us, he's going to pick up the KO on the red steel. I, I, I see, saw no point at switching out at that point. Here I'm going to go out into my external axe and just fire off the whirlwind here. And see, believe, I believe he, yeah, he just swaps out in case I was like a curse set, I guess. And goes out and do his Lunala here to sack it. Um, as I just click body slam. And I do click whirlwind. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to click whirlwind here. And he is just going to go out and do his landers here. Which I believe I just decided to stay in and just kind of scout what he wants to go for. I thought maybe he might uh, click Iron Tail or something, predicting my forges. But I'm going to stay in here and I will actually be able to get my 50% of Barry off as well. And I'm actually going to eat that hit pretty well considering I am more special defensive than anything. I do have a little bit of physical defense, but I um, but I still ate that like really well. I'm going to click the Body Slam here just to kind of scout for damage. And based off the Earthquake damage and how much that Body Slam to him, he, he is definitely pretty physically defensive Flanderous. Which I thought was an interesting bring considering my team. I didn't think that the Death Flanderous was like the best thing. And I don't really know um, like what the reason for it was. I'm sure he told me, but I just don't remember off the top of my head why he decided to bring a Fist of Flanderous against my team. Um... So yeah, I thought that was a little interesting. He's going to fire off the Toxic here, which is a little unfortunate. Here I'm going to predict the knockoff, actually, though, and go out on my floor. Just I 100% predict the knockoff. I thought that was an amazing play. Uh, I was really happy about that. And he's going to get the Earthquake off. Um, of course, I'm going to be able to eat it because I am physically defensive. And this is not a very, very offensive lander. So as I just click Hidden Power Fire, predicting the... Um, what was I predicting? What does he have left still? He has Heliolisk, he has... I think I missed... No, yeah, I did. I did misclick that turn. I I thought I misclicked and did click Defog. I thought that was the misclick. I did misclick and click Hidden Power, and you'll actually see that. It kind of ends up mattering. Um, you can click the Toxic here after Earthquake spamming for a bit. Um, he's actually... <laughs> yeah, I remember that now. And I think he brought Fizdef Landers as a lore for my Mega Charizard X. That'd be my only guess, but I think that's kind of a weird thing to do. I don't really know. But uh, he's going to get Toxic as I set this up. I'm trying to make sure my forge is as healthy as possible as it can be. And here I am going to fire off the Moon Blast as the Earthquakes again. And you'll see right here 
um, as I get the Moonblast slot, that he's going to live at about 10%-ish, which would the difference between the Hidden Power and the Moonblast damage mean that had I clicked, not even 10%, like I have 1 HP, so had I clicked Moonblast instead of Hidden Power, instead of misclicking, because obviously I had no reason to click Hidden Power there, that was uh, very obviously a misclick. Um, had I clicked it, my Forger would have still been at around half health, and, uh, you know, that would have been nice to have it, maybe as a sack later in the game. Or to deal with that Heliolisk, uh, potentially. Uh, obviously, I'd have to deal with the Toxic a bit, but, you know, maybe I'll be, it somehow beat it. That'd be my best bet for that thing, because I'm pretty sure it's Scarf in the back. Here's going to go out and big Aerodactyl as it's a double down with me killing with Moonblast and him killing with Toxic. Here, I'm going to go out into my Snorlax. I thought he'd go into Heliolisk. I thought Heliolisk was the play there. But, no, he goes out into his... Um, into his Mega Aerodactyl, and I'm gonna actually click Rollwind here, predicting uh, him to want to just Stone Edge, predicting the taunt, like sort of thing. I, I Whirlwinded, predicting him to think I was going to predict the taunt and attack, and so I think that's why I clicked Rollwind. Uh, Sorry, it's been a while since I played this game. Here he is going to get whirlwinded out here though into the Araquanid. Um, and of course I'm just going to whirlwind out again as he liquidation gets fit stuff drop. And um, yeah, here he's going to be forced out into his Lunala and his Lunala is going to fall down here. So let's call that Lunala like he caused me no trouble this game. I, I mean I had a decent team for that Lunala with the Ash Greninja and the Snorlax. But you know, it's still all Lunala nonetheless so it's nice that that thing did not cause my team a major problem. Here he's going to go out into his Mega Aerodactyl and he's going to taunt. And I predict that I could body slam. And at this point, I think my only chance at winning this game is me to get the, the, the paralysis onto this. Um, me to get the paralysis with body slam so that my Greninja outspeeds this thing. And I can just kill with like a Dark Pulse or a Rock Slide or whatever. And get my Battle Bond off. And at that point, I uh, hope like maybe the Heliolisk is like not Scarfed as like a Spadef set or something like that. And I can just 2 KO with Dark Pulse and then I need the flinch. And then Iraq would just die to a Rock Slide. Or, um, as you can see here at this point, I realize I'm probably not going to get the Paralysis. So I do just end up clicking Whirlwind here. And I'm hoping for the 50 50, 50 chance that I get send him out into his Araquanid and I just fire off a rock slide and kill him that way in order to get my panel bound off. Because I can kill um the Mega Aerodactyl after rocks easily with my Ash Greninja. This Heliolisk is just really the only thing stopping my Ash Greninja in the back from winning. Fortunately we are not gonna be able to whirlwind out the uh Ash Greninja. We're not the Ash Greninja, the Araquanid. We are gonna get out the Heliolisk and we're gonna die to Toxic um, we got no paralysis on that Mega Aerodactyl, and at this point, I'm going to Dark Pulse. He's actually not Scarfed. I am going to be able to get the Dark Pulse off and actually be able to 2 KO, but we do not get the flinch, and he's just going to be able to Thunderbolt and take us out. Um, so yeah, that is actually going to end up being the game. GG to Aaron, of course, uh, I don't think there's any major hacks. I think uh, really the turning point of the game was me losing my, my Lodic, because my Lodic would have been really, really nice for some of the things for that um, for that Landorus really I wouldn't have had a lot of my mons toxic and I think that would have been the major major changing point in the game just not having my fortress or mainly my Snorlax toxic um, but I mean that would have had them late game um, so yeah that's really really unfortunate that that happened uh, that I misplayed around that um, like that, the same thing that happened last time I just sacked by my Lodic thinking that was the only way I could win the game and stop his uh, wall breaker when in reality I had something else in the back versus mid with the Charizard X and he already with the Forges so you know that's unfortunate for me but you know nothing you can do about that we'll bounce we'll try to bounce back next week in week 8 versus Blin and his uh, Creed Dailies so make sure to check that out check that out next week like I said make sure to check out uh, Aaron in the description below and make sure to check out Odds uh, for making this layout and of course check out all the other APA coaches down in the description below I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure that like button, of course, and subscribe for more league content. Pokemon Sword and Shield, only two months away. That would be great. Um, can't wait to hopefully do uh, more league content then. Hopefully. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. You know, once again, this has been shitty. And I'm out.